Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to another video on Lightning Web Component Development Series on Apex Hours. So in previous video, we learned about Lightning Web Component, what is Lightning Web Component, how you can use it, where you should use it, why we are using it now, and uh, what uh, were the differences between Aura and Lightning. And in this video, we will be doing some hands-on related to data binding and rendering. So in this video, I'll show you how you can bind your data in your Lightning Web component and how you can control the rendering over it, right? So let's quickly start this presentation. So in this video, guys, I'll show you what is data binding and rendering. Okay, just a second. Okay, so let's start this by my introduction. I'm Kapil Batra. I'm a Salesforce MVP and founder of blog salesforcepole.com and the YouTube channel Salesforce Pole. I'm from Ajmer, Rajasthan and I'm currently working as a senior Salesforce consultant. So the agenda of this presentation, this video will be to learn about data binding, like what is data binding, what are the types of data binding and how you can render your data conditionally in your Lightning Web component. So guys, before starting this video, we will be starting it from scratch. I'll assume you don't know anything about LWC development. And this is your first time while you will be trying to build your components. So we will be starting with very basic. We'll be starting with how you can use VS Code to create a project, how you will be able to create a scratch org and then build your component in it. Okay. So let's move ahead. So if you have started your journey as a developer already, then you must have heard these terms data binding and rendering. There are many high level data binding definitions are available online, but I will try to keep it simple as I can. So what is data binding? In simple words, when you map your data from backend to front end, it's called data binding. In LWC, our backend will be JavaScript and for server side, it is going to be Apex and front end will be HTML. So whenever you bind your data from JavaScript to HTML, it will be called a data binding. Okay. In Lightning Web Component, you can bind your data using two ways. Either you can use expression or the other option is using getter properties. So in this presentation, in this video, I'll show you live examples of using expression and using getter properties. So below is a simple example of how you can bind the data using expression. You can bind your JavaScript expression to LWC using curly braces. You just have to declare the expression in the JavaScript and use it between curly braces in your HTML to bind it. Let's understand it using an example. So let's suppose you have to build a lightning web component. So previously, if you are already building Aura, so you might be using that developer console maybe, okay, to create new Aura component, to modify it, right? But for lightning web component, developer console is not having the option to create a, or modify a lightning web component. So for that, you have to use a separate IDE, okay? And in this video, I'll be using VS Code for that. So first you have to install the VS Code. This is a free ID. You can download it online, right? And after installing it, so I have already installed it. So for to start this, I will be creating a new project. So for that, you can simply press Command Shift P if you are using Mac and Control Shift P if you are using Windows. And then you have to type create project with manifest. Okay, hit enter. Now it will be creating a project. Now here you can choose the template like standard MT or analytics. So for this demo, I will be using the standard default template, whatever is available. Okay. Then you have to enter the project name. Okay. So let's enter the project name. Let's say LWC stack 23 because it is year 2023. All right. And then you have to save it in a folder. So I'm just saving it in my default folder in the document. So I will do create project. 
and here you go. So this is a simple project created using default template. So here on the left pane, you can see my project name and these are different, different folders in it. So your content, your LWC class in sys and other stuff will be in this force app uh, folder here. Okay. And here you can see LWC is here or is here right now to build your LWC, either you can use a developer org and connect this VS code uh, project with your developer org, or you can also use a scratch org, right? So to get more details about developer org and scratch org, you can follow. There are some simple trails available over trailhead that will give you a good insight about both of them. So let's suppose you have created a project and then you have to create an org to see the demo. So basically there are two ways using which you can see the output of a lightning web component. Either you can configure a local server on your system or you can have a developer org or scratch org. So in this video, we'll be using scratch org. So to create a new scratch org, just press command shift P and whatever command I'll be using, I am using it on a Mac. So whenever I say command, you just, if you're using a window, you have to use uh, control there. So here I'm doing command shift P and I'm typing default and here it is create a default scratch org. So you just have to hit enter and we'll be using the uh, default project.json file here. Now you have to name uh, this is scratch org. So I'm just using same name what I was having there. And here uh, we have to enter number of dates. So I'm adding 30. Okay, now after this command, it might take few minutes to create a new scratch org. So here you can see our scratch org is ready for next 30 days. And after the next 30 days, it will be automatically disposed. So whatever changes you are making in your scratch org, make sure to take it, take back off of it or Maybe like before it gets expired, you can create a new scratch org and push your changes to that scratch org as well. Okay. All right. Now to log in into your scratch org, you have to press command shift P and use the command. Open default org. So here using this command, you will be able to open a default scratch org. This might also take some time. Okay. So for the sake of this video, to keep it short, we will skip this loading part and we will directly show you the output of how it is going to be once this command uh, will complete successfully. So after running that command, it will open a new browser window and it will open your org as well which will be connect which will be uh, automatically connected with your this vs code project now whatever you will be building in that vs code you will be able to see your output in this org right so let's try to build a lightning web component now okay now to build a lightning web component you just need to simply press command shift p and then create lightning web component Okay, and here you can simply put the desired output, desired name of that file. So in this video for this bind HTML example, I will be using bind HTML. Okay, let it be in default directory. So this is our lightning web component and here you will be getting HTML, JavaScript and the meta config file. Okay. So to build your component, as I told you, you just need to declare your expression in the JavaScript file and you can simply bind it in your HTML file using curly braces. So let's try it out. So let's suppose I'm declaring an expression here. Let's say my value is equal to Salesforce bolt. Okay. Now this is my default expression here. And now in HTML, you can simply do like, 
So this is a static text and to bind my expression, I will be using curly braces and I will put the same name here. My value. Okay. Now using this, I have created a lightning web component and I have bind that value from JavaScript to this HTML. Okay. Now before putting this component live or before pushing it to your org, you need to make it available for your org. Okay. So now we have just created lightning web component. Now we have to declare where are we going to use it. So for that, you need to make some configuration in this meta.xml file. Now to do that, first you have to make your component exposed. So we will change this property to true. Okay. Now you have to set up the target. So in Salesforce, there are multiple targets where you can display your component. Okay. Like you could have it on a lightning quick action, lightning app page, home page, record page, lightning flow, and there are some others as well. But for this example, I'll be just having it on a new application or new lightning page. So for that, we have to set targets here. So to set targets, you need to add this targets root tag here first. Okay. Now underneath this targets, you, your targets root tag, you can have more target. So, okay, it is already there due to autocomplete. So first we'll be using lightning app page. Then we'll be using lightning home page. And another target would be record page. So here it is. Now we are having three targets here where we can have our lightning web component, right? Now to push it to a default scratch org, you just have to simply press command shift P and use command push source to default scratch org and overwrite any conflict. If you're using a developer org, then this pushing stuff will be a little bit different. You just have to press right click on this component and then there will be an option to deploy this component to your org. But as this is just a scratch org, so in scratch org, you can use this command as well. So now, as you can see, this is command. This command was running and it was pushing our component to your org and it ran successfully. Now let's check out our org. Now we need a place to have that component. So either we can have it on record page, app page or home page. So on record page, we can simply like, I can simply open any object, any detail page of that object and I can drag my component there, okay. But let's not, uh, you know, uh, mess around those existing things. Let's create something new. So for that, I'll be creating a new application first. So for that, I'll just search for manager here and go to app manager. All right. And here I'll be creating a new lightning app. So let me put my app name. Salesforce bold. This is the developer name, description, anything could be here. Let's put a color. Let's make it red. Oh, this is too red. I think this should be. Yeah, this looks good. I'm not having any image here. You can add image as well as per a requirement. Okay. Now I will click next. Okay, I'll be using the default navigation. I don't need utility items. I will press next. Now here, we need to add navigation tabs here if we need any navigation tab. So as this is a new application and we are just creating it for demo. So we won't be having any existing navigation here. Instead of that, we can just simply have next and here we'll be adding our admin profile system admin here and finish so now this will create a new application and here in this list below you'll be able to find that application so here's our application now we will just open it i'll do add it okay and here using pages tab i'll be creating a new page 
So I'll be having a lightning app page here. Let's name it data binding and rendering. Next. Now this is the different, different layout you can choose for your application. So for this demo, I will be choosing this three region where I'll be able to put three component on a single screen. And this will also show you the different form factors. Like if you're using it from a mobile device, from a tablet, from horizontal and vertical view, how it is going to be. So let's click finish. Okay. So this is just an empty page now. Now here on the left pane, you will be able to search your component if you are having the proper XML configuration. So our component name was bind HTML and yes, we are having it here. Okay. So this is our component guys. Let's save it. Activate it. And now here in the lightning experience, we will be adding this new page to this application. So add app to page. First, we'll select our application and then we will do add app to page and save. Okay, so this has been saved to that specific application. Now let's go back. Now to search that new application, you just have to click on this app launcher icon. And here you can search for the new application. So this is our new application, Salesforce Bold. And here you will be able to find the new tab, which is having a new page, data binding and rendering. And this is our component, which we created right now. So we bind uh, the value uh, Salesforce Bold from JavaScript to this HTML, right? So this is how you can create a new component, and bind your HTML in it. Now, let's decorate it a little bit. Let's make it more beautiful using lightning design system styles and library as well. So for that, you just need to use lightning design system. So there are two websites basically, and I can say you can use them as Bible of LWC. So whenever you need to create a new component, first you have to check if the existing functionality is already available. Maybe you need to create a button or something. So there are some existing code available on the library, which you can just simply copy and paste in your lightning web component and generate the output. So for that, you just have to search for lightning web component library and you can open the first link here i believe this must be the library yes this is so this is the common library for aura and lightning as well here you can see aura components and here you will be able to find lightning stuff okay so let me close it and here in lightning to make this component more beautiful let's try to find out some uh, maybe header or so so for that we can use this lightning card I believe this would look good there. For that lightning card, this could be the output of that component. You can simply add a lightning card like this and have your component uh, in this border card kind of layout. And there are different, different things like cards with narrow variant. So here you are able to see an icon as well underneath that you are able to see the text and there's another one card with custom title and footer okay let's check that out so this is a custom title and footer as well so for this i'm just selecting card with narrow variant so as i told you the code will be automatically here so you can see the code to generate this output on a lightning web component so whenever you're building something new make sure to check the library there are tons of examples available different different components and as you know like salesforce will be adding the new tools the new components with every release as well so for this demo let's quickly copy this and let's go to vs code this is my html and paste it here let me yeah okay so the title let's change it to data binding and let's not have any button there and instead of that let's remove footer as well okay and here we can use the same text again so i will do hello then i will bind my value which is my value and then screenation mark save it 
command shift P push source to arc. Okay. Now this was the previous output. Now let me open it in a new tab just to show you the comparison as well. So we have made changes in our lightning web component deployed and this is the output. Now you see how beautiful it is as compared to the last one. So you can use this library to get predefined component. And if you'd like to customize something so for that, you have lightning design system. So you can just simply search for lightning design system here and this is the website lightningdesignsystem.com so if you need to customize anything let's like suppose if you need to maybe add an icon so you can just go to icons there are different different icons available with code so you can just simply search from here apart from that there are components as well if you will see component blueprint so what we have added right now was lightning card so if you will see blueprint of card so here you'll be able to find the same blueprint but with custom html code here so here this is just html code so if you need to make any changes in any existing class or something maybe need to change the style of it so you can customize it accordingly and again you can just copy and paste your code from this lightning design system as well one of the best thing about being a lightning web component developer here is how much content available online you know to build these things you don't have to write much now you can simply copy and paste things over the internet but in my opinion trust me guys this is very very true in my opinion this is one of the worst thing also like how much content is available over the internet the content what you'll be able to find on google it is available for everyone okay and somehow i believe like you know these kind of content which is already available that that might you know stop your creativity to think more about it like how you can you know make it a little bit better uh, from the existing layout but anyways i mean it is what it is if something is available you don't have to you know write it manually then so this was our first demo to how you can um, bind your bind your expression from javascript to your lightning web component okay and you can also make the expression value dynamic like on any buttons click or text change it is up to your requirement let me show you another example where we will be having this value as dynamic okay so for that we will be creating a new component so i'll do command shift p create new component let's name it uh, bind html dynamic okay let's put it in the default directory before that before doing any changes let's just copy the target and rendering stuff from the previous component so i have copied it and i will paste it here all right so we are good here let's close it okay now in this example i will be creating a lightning input and on text on change of the text of the lightning input we will be uh, having the dynamic output in a value okay so let's just copy the default html first what we just created in this previous component we don't have to search for it again okay now let it be like this my value okay now I need a lightning input. So now as I need a new text box, I won't be creating it from scratch, right? Because I'm already aware about component library. So I'll just go to component library. This is component library. I will find for, I will search for input. Here it is. Okay. So this is a default lightning input, which is available. And this is the code of it. So you can simply just Copy it from here, go to your component and paste it here. Let's add a new line. So for that, I will add a BR. You don't have to look for design system or library for a new line tag, okay? And so this is my lightning input text. The label is enter some text here, okay? Now we will bind that dynamic value first. So in value, I will be having same value which is my value okay and on change of this i will create a function in javascript 
so let's name it handle change so this is this will be the function in javascript so let me just copy its name so we won't be making any typos there because in javascript it won't be showing any error for typing mistakes okay now we have created handle change event here okay let me add event and first we will have that value as well so i will add my value okay let's add default one salesforce bolt all right now here on this on change event we will be getting values from that input so whatever we will be typing on that input on client side we will be getting that value in this on change so to assign new value the type value in my value you can simply do this dot my value to refer the parameter you have to use this keyword here is equal to now you have to get the value from that input to get the values you'll be using this event here so you can simply do event dot target dot my value okay so in the targeted uh, input in the targeted event we will be having my value from there let's save it command shift p push source to org and check the output so this handle change will change the my value expression on change of the input text value in real time okay let me show you the output now so this is our application let me close it yep so here on the right side we'll be adding that component let's change the name as well otherwise uh, data binding let's make it dynamically okay so previously it was data binding and now this new one is data binding dynamically okay it is deployed now to add that component here you need to click on this gear icon do edit page and from this edit page we will be back on that screen which we got from that added application okay now here i will be having my next component so let's search for it and here it is bind with dynamic okay let's drag it here save it okay change is saved let's go back okay here it is now here you can see enter some text so while i will be entering or modifying the text the value over here will be modifying accordingly so if you will notice here i'm typing okay somehow we are not getting the live value there on the expression here so for that we will go back to that handle on change and we might have done some mistake okay so let me check the javascript part all right so guys here from this target we are supposed to get the value my value is our targeted parameter so we will do event dot target dot value to get the value okay so this was the mistake we were having here all right it is deployed now try to refresh it and see the output again okay now if you will see if i am removing the values from here the values are getting removed from the above parameter as well so let's say if i'm changing the value here now you can see the real time changes here so when i'm pressing any key so it is getting added automatically above there as well right so that's how you can bind your expressions i would say dynamically okay so here we uh, try we try to bind that expression on the change of this input it is up to your requirement maybe you need it on a button or something so you can also do that thing as well okay now the other example of data binding would be using getter properties so you can use getter properties if you want to compute a value for a property for example to convert the name to all upper case letters you can use a getter function in the javascript class instead of expression in the template now let me show you how you can use the getter to bind the properties so for that we will be creating a new component again so we'll do create lightning web component let's name it uh, getter expression okay 
let's put it in the default directory and the first thing what we will do we'll just copy this targets from a previous component just try to you know avoid the typing of the code as much as you can okay because you don't want to do any typos or something or you should not be looking for the same stuff you should not be searching for the same stuff again and again if you are having it already in one of those component okay now this is my getter uh, component okay so here i will add two lightning inputs now okay in first one i'll be having first name in the second one i'll be having last name and on change of those uh, input values i will be dynamically binding a value which will be having those values but with uppercase functionality okay so for that first we will as i said try to copy the code so we'll be copying the same code from this previous example where we had a single input so let's change this label to okay so we have changed the label to first name now we won't be binding it here we won't be having this expression here okay now we need another input so we'll just copy this we will add a new line we will paste it here so this is first name and this is going to be last name all right and if you will notice i'm using the common on change in both of these inputs so in backend we definitely need to check out like which on change is working is it from the input one or input two right so let's add name here which will help us to identify the input so let's add first name and here last name so we are having first name and last name here as well now go to the getter expression javascript okay so here let's suppose first uh, let's have first name so this is my first parameter which is having empty value here and then we will add last name as another parameter which will be having none there okay now we will create that handle chain function so let's just quickly copy it to avoid any typing mistake okay and we will be using event to get the values so usually you can get the values using event.target.value as i showed you in the previous example but now we are having two inputs here so first we have to check which input is having that event okay so for that let's have a constant here to check the field and we will do event dot target in the previous example we have used value but this time we will be using name attribute from that event so event dot target dot name which will be giving us the first name or last name okay now here we will do if field triple equals to first name So we'll do this dot first name is equal to event dot target dot value and else if field is equal to last name. So in that case, we will be having this dot last name as event dot target dot values so now we have assigned the values okay now let's suppose if you have to make it an uppercase so you won't be having any third expression here to just concave the string and then you know use the uppercase function and then you have to use this dot first name plus this dot last name or maybe that third expression as well instead of that we'll be using a getter expression okay so we'll use get then let's name it uppercase name okay now here we will just return the first name okay and this 
this dot last name okay now here we will use the javascript function which is two uppercase okay so this is the getter expression which can be used in your html similar to the normal javascript expression okay but here using this expression we have just directly converted the value in two upper cases you know without assigning it to separate expression or a separate value so let's try to have it there now so here instead of this my value we'll do upper case name and data binding dynamically here we can have getter expression okay or let's make it data binding using getter expression this looks good let's push our code okay it is deployed now now let's go here we have to add that component so we will do edit page all right now here we will find getter expression here it is we are not having any error okay let's quickly save it and go back so now this is our third component so let's suppose if i will type something here i'm typing my name so if you'll notice here i'm typing in small letters but on the output you are able to see the capital letters here uppercase letter because here we have created a getter expression which is making these values in uppercase right so that's how you can use the getter expression to bind your values now the next thing which we will be discussing in this video is data rendering like how you can render your data conditionally in your lightning web component so for that we will be having another new component so to render your data conditionally you can use template if true and template if false then there you can have your expressions and in the expression you can have static or dynamic expression also you can use your getter properties here as i told you like getter properties are similar to the javascript uh, properties which we have added in our last example so for that we'll be creating a new lightning web component all right let's create new one create lightning web component and let's name it conditional rendering okay so first just copy the configuration conditional rendering here it is you will learn more about these configuration and salesforce targets in upcoming videos as well so don't worry if you're getting confused here like how i'm supposed to add some other configuration how i'm supposed to add if i would like to restrict any specific configuration so don't worry about it we are having a separate video for it which is targets and lightning web component okay so you will be able to learn these things in that video so the xml file is ready okay now here this time we will be having a checkbox here and on the check of that checkbox we will be maintaining the rendering we will be you know making a specific element true and false we will uh, show and hide that specific element okay so for that first we will need a basic html okay so okay this is conditional rendering let's take it from here the basic html stuff all right now let's change the title first so the title we will be using conditional rendering elements okay now for this demo we can use this hello okay let it be there and <clears throat> now let me remove all this so as i told you we need a checkbox now so what we are going to do now are we going to build it no we will just go to that library we will search for that checkbox 
So here checkbox is also part of this lightning input. So here you can simply uh, search for checkbox. Here it is. And we will be just having this, let's say this basic option, first one, okay. So let's copy it from here and let's go to our code, add a new line, paste it here, okay. So this is our checkbox now, which where type is having checkbox, okay. Let's change the label and make it, click me and uh, let's change the name actually we don't need name here but if it is here let it be let's have the same name here as well we need on change here to maintain the rendering on change of this text box or uh, checkbox sorry so we'll be having handle change for that okay now on back end we will be having a uh, element and we'll be changing its value on change of this text box okay so let's suppose the element, okay, let's create an element first. So let's say we are creating, show me the default value of this element is false. Okay, now let's stop here and go back to HTML. First, we will be having template if tag to maintain the rendering. So here you can simply do template if true. So if show me is true, then let me copy it quickly okay then i'm just having a static text i am visible okay and if the same way template if false okay if false equals to show me so if show me is false just a second okay so if this show me is false then i will display a different text which is i am not visible okay so that will be all in our html we'll be just having this basic example for rendering okay now we have to maintain the value in the backend as well let me remove this we don't need it for this example let me remove this pr as well we don't need it either and now for the show me first we will use that handle change event all right now here in handle change we will do this dot show me is equal to event dot target like in previous example, we did event.target.name to get the name of that at, uh, from that input, event.target.value to get the value from that input. But here in checkbox, we won't be getting value or name. In checkbox, we need to check if it is checked or not. So for that, you can simply do event.target.checked, right? So through which we will be getting the value if it is checked or not, we will be having true or false here. And the same way we will be adding true or false in this show me. So let's quickly deploy it. All right, it is deployed now. Let's go to our scratch org edit page. And as we were having three layout here, we don't have any space to add more components. So uh, let me add it about or underneath this one. Okay. Okay, let's save it go back and this is our component guys so here now you can say i'm not visible if i will check it it says i'm visible so that's how you can conditionally render something in your lightning web component okay now here also if you notice this is you know uh, we need some padding here so for that if you need some padding you can go to simply your lightning design system search for padding here it is so here also we'll just copy and paste so let's suppose we need padding from padding around okay so this is none small this is x small i think x small should be fine so i'll be just having this div from here i'll go to my code this is my component and i need to add some padding here okay 
so here is my div okay sorry and we will close it here okay let's apply it now and check the output again we must be having some padding now and the ui will be a little more beautiful now so here as you can notice we are having some padding now you can increase the padding based on the examples available here and this is our functionality so that's how you can make the elements to render on a lightning web component conditionally so i believe that is it for today guys so today we learned data binding dynamic data binding data binding is a getter properties and conditional rendering as well and also i taught you basic stuff like how you can have vs code create a project create a scratch or create application create a new page how to have your component on that video oh, there are so many things in this video i hope you will be able to catch up here so i think that it is for today and uh, yep so if you like today's video guys uh, subscribe to the channel will be awesome i'll see you in the next one guys thanks for watching